Britain still waits for the trains to run as the rail strike drags on at a cost no one can calculate. Emergency regulations by the government and peace moves by the TUC still fail to bring the locos out of their yards. Footplate Union Secretary James Beatty is unyielding. It is not strictly correct to say, as the Prime Minister has done, that this is a, a, a inter-union dispute. It takes two unions to make a dispute, and we have no dispute with the NUR. We have at no time interfered with the negotiations of that union or with their agreements with the Transport Commission. Our claim is for the restoration of differentials by the Transport Commission. It amounts to increases ranging from one and six to five and six per week. It is a claim with the Transport Commission and with nobody else. Industry forges ahead, but with one eye on dwindling stocks and piling output. The factories need steel, the steelworks need ore, both need coal. And with their lifelines cut, some are already at a standstill. Steel is vital to Britain's shipyards, and over them too hangs the threat of unemployment. Road traffic round London is three times normal. The emergency arrangements for staggering hours ease the rush hour pressure a little, but hour by hour the stream of cars pours by. London's police, helped by the AA and RAC, organise special parking areas to cope with the thousands of cars bringing city workers to their jobs. In the Royal Parks, along the Mall, and in every suitable street fringing central London, cars are parked nose to tail. To handle the nation's mail, troops and RAF help out the GPO. Army lorries leave the central sorting office at Mount Pleasant for many different parts of the country, loaded to capacity with your letters and mine. North Holt Aerodrome, RAF Transport Command planes wait to carry their share of the mail, which should be travelling far more cheaply by rail. A postman on a plane is a strange sight, but these are strange times when anything can happen except what seems reasonable. From a helicopter we can see the full extent of the needless congestion which strangles the capital, and which is repeated in other towns and cities. This madness must stop, and the control of our affairs be restored to its rightful holders, the Parliament of our country.